I love these monitors from Korea. They're just such a good deal. The 32 inch 4K, man, that monitor is amazing. Super premium IPS panel. I really love it. It's great. This is the 28 inch version that we're going to take a look at. So the new Korean monitor that we're going to take a look at is the 289K. The only reason I'm taking a look at this is because a lot of people on the forum asked about it. They said, you know, 40 inches is just way too large. Uh, I got the 32 inch monitor, the crossover 32 inch monitor, the, the 32 4K or 324K, depending on, you know, just how you want to pronounce it. But the uh, 32 4K is a 32 inch 4K monitor, but it's got a premium panel in it. I think it's the same panel that the 32 inch Dell monitor uses that retails for around $1,300. Uh, so it's a really high quality panel. And so the 40 inch monitor is really more of a workhorse monitor. It's like the super MVA panel type. But the panel type in the 324K and the 289K that we're looking at is more of an AHVA or IPS type panel, really top shelf panel. Now I think the one in these is an IPS panel from the looks of it when looking at, you know, a pure black screen in the dark, from looking uh, around the glow on the edges, you know, IPS, PLS, something like that. But it's very high quality and very fast response time. Um, this monitor is a 28 inch monitor as opposed to a 32 inch monitor. When you're running 4K in 28 inches, you're definitely going to need display scaling of some kind. You're not going to be using, you know, the standard issue 10 or 12 pixel console font when you're using this. On Linux and on Macs, this display is gorgeous. You can have a ton of screen real estate and it's 4K and so the pixels are really tiny and you can't see them and so it looks amazing. On Windows, if you're going to run Windows at 100%, it's too small to read. You can't see it. You have to use display scaling. And I would say that you will probably be most comfortable at about 150% display scaling. 125% uh, is just a little too small. Uh, so when we're talking about 4K and 28 inches, we're talking about 150 pixels per inch give or take. That's not quite retina resolution, um, but that is a really high resolution, a really huge number of pixels. So if 4K and 28 inches is your thing, then this is the monitor for you. Now in terms of the aesthetic, it's got these super, super thin bezels with a sort of metalized bezel at the top. It's got a very basic glass stand with sort of an, an aluminum connector to connect the glass stand to the, to the monitor. Uh, it does have tilt, but there's no height adjustment, of course. The tilt range is fairly limited, but I think a reasonable tilt range. And it also has a visa mount on the back in terms of a, a mounting solution. So, you know, again, like the other Korea monitors, this is pretty minimalistic. The one thing that was different with this monitor is that the on-screen software, the on-screen control software is completely different. Now looking at the connectors on the back, it looks like that this might be the same controller that we've seen in other monitors. And the 32 inch monitor and this 28 inch monitor from Crossover came out at the same time. And so I expected them to have the same panel software, but that's not actually the case. The panel software on this one, even though it's a 28 inch, looks more like a TV. And the one on the 32 inch, the on-screen software feels more like PC monitor control software. Nevertheless, I was able to find the options that I needed in order to set the on-screen controls into English. Although it was a lot trickier to set it into English on this 28 inch monitor than it is on the 32 inch monitors and some of the other ones that we've looked at that were based on the earlier version of the controller. So if you want to set it to English, you should follow this general procedure. Go to this menu, then go down to this item, and then pick this and then your monitor should be in English. I actually saw a lot of people on eBay and on the internet forums complaining that you can't actually set this monitor to English, but I did not have that problem thanks to Google Goggles and Google Translate. So I don't think that that's a recent feature. I think you've been able to do it all along, but you know, I wanted to take a look at it. Now in terms of panel quality, because this is a Korean monitor and you know, it's from crossover, technically those are B grade monitors. There might be a bad pixel or there might be some minor flaw with it, but that's also part of the reason for the huge discount in price. The difference is that these panels are really high end panels to start with. The panels that we've looked at in some of the 40 inch monitors, those are not exactly high end panels, but those monitors are very effective workhorse monitors and they're also very inexpensive for a 40 inch display. Now these 28 inch displays are a little bit more competitive and there's also a lot of other sources for panels in the 28 inch range and so these 28 inch panels are much higher quality panels and so potentially that these panels were rejected for some reason and ended up in these products doesn't necessarily mean that you know you're gonna have a gob of 50 dead pixels in the middle or something like that. Certainly you can return the monitor for those kind of a problem but there might be a bad pixel in the corner or there might be some other very very minor issue with the actual panel itself. But overall, for the 50 or so that I've ordered over the years, 27 inch monitors, 40 inch monitors, 
now I've ordered a couple 32 inch monitors. I haven't really had bad luck. I myself have had to return maybe three monitors out of 50 over the last five or six years, give or take. So let's talk about the inputs. This monitor has one DisplayPort 1.2 input, one HDMI 2.0 input, two more HDMI 1.2 inputs, VGA for whatever reason, and then it also has optical audio out, PC headphones, and a USB firmware upgrade port. So theoretically, this could be upgraded to support FreeSync at some point in the future. Now in terms of diagnostics and overclocking, yes, we did a whole, run a whole bunch of tests, but I'm sorry to report, this monitor doesn't really overclock past 60 hertz. Now, with DisplayPort 1.2, you're not really gonna be running 4K much past 60 hertz because there's just not enough bandwidth in DisplayPort 1.2. But if you lower your resolution to say 1080p and then try to overclock with 1080p, some monitors can actually overclock. With this monitor, even though you can overclock it to 120 hertz at 1080p, you get significant frame skipping at that refresh rate. So it doesn't really support 120 hertz. Um, I had significant frame skipping past 72 hertz, although at 72 hertz it seemed like I was getting some frame skipping, but not the difference between 60 hertz and 72 hertz worth of frame skipping. It was kind of weird. I also tried 75 hertz, and it seemed like there was much more frame skipping at 75 hertz than 72 hertz, at 1080p anyway. So I think this monitor is really just designed to run at 60 hertz, and you're not going to get a significant overclock from it. That's too bad. I think one of the next major features that are going to come out from these monitors are going to be that you can run you know 4k if you want to run 4k but you can also run you know 120 hertz at a lower resolution than 4k because certainly the panels support it but the electronics between the computer and the panel just can't keep up with it i think also maybe toward the end of the year when we start to see displayport 1.3 that this will become a non-issue because displayport 1.3 will support significantly higher bandwidths and, and significantly higher resolutions uh, to sort of make some of these problems go away also included with the version that i happened to buy was a remote though i think that you can pick if you want a remote or not to save a few bucks. Like the other Korean monitors that we've looked at recently, this does have an external power brick for doing its power, but the power connector is a standard DC barrel jack instead of the more proprietary 4-pin adapters that we've seen on the other model monitors coming from Korea. Now there was one weird thing that I ran into, and that is it seemed like HDMI 2.0 was working on all three HDMI ports. Looking at the manual, HDMI port 3 seems to be indicated for the HDMI 2.0 port, but it seems like HDMI 2.0 was working fine on all three ports. I don't know if that's a fluke or if I've gotten an experimental model or what's going on there. Um, I'm still doing some investigation on that to actually figure out what the particulars of that are going on. But there are a couple places that advertise the 289 as actually having three HDMI 2.0 ports. But I'm pretty sure it's really just meant to be on the one. And so I don't know if it's a hardware or a firmware fluke on the particular one that I have, that HDMI 2.0 actually seems to work on all three ports. Now, depending on how paranoid you are about dead pixels, there are versions of this monitor that are available that are guaranteed to only have zero or one dead pixels. So if you want to get a display and you want it to be absolutely perfect, and you can see the tiny 150 pixel per inch pixels on the display, then you can get a pixel perfect version and have only zero or one dead pixel. So this is a DC solution that we're talking about for the backlight, and that means that it's going to be a flicker free experience. That's a little bit more expensive for the backlight circuit, but that's really important to a lot of people. And so this particular monitor has been equipped with a flicker free backlight. Overall, in the in the testing that we did, you know, for color accuracy and color clarity and things like that, it performed on par with an IPS display. Now, if you get one of these and you're wanting super accurate colors, you're going to have to do your own color calibration. And so the monitor is capable of displaying full 444 chroma on DisplayPort 1.2 with the 8-bit per color color depth. And so the other thing with this panel, because the response time is so fast, you will experience a relatively low rate of motion blur. Like the other controller that we looked at in the 32, this one is running about 1 to 2 frames behind a CRT. Uh, more on the 2 side, maybe a little bit more than 2. This display did seem to be a little bit faster on average than the 32 inch, but the instrumentation that I have is not really any more accurate than a digital camera taking pictures of a monitor and then just putting the numbers in a spreadsheet. So it's not really perfect accuracy, but it is between 16 and 25 milliseconds behind a CRT um, for almost all of the tests that I did. That makes it just a hair faster than the 32 inch monitor, but that's probably because it's a physically smaller monitor and a slightly different panel. And you can see from the UFO testing that we're doing here that there's practically no motion blur. 
So that's been a quick overview of the Crossover 289K. If you've got a laptop that you're running your display off of or you want to use display scaling, then the 28-inch monitor, this monitor, is a good choice for you. You're going to have to run Windows at 125 or 150% display scaling. If you're using a Mac or you've got Linux, it should work completely fine. If you've got a MacBook or something like that, all you need is a mini DisplayPort to DisplayPort adapter. This monitor should work great. My general recommendation, if you want the really high-quality panel in a larger format, that you go for the 32-inch over the 28-inch, yeah, it's a little bit more expensive, but the 32-inch will let you maybe get away with running 100% display scaling so that you can get the full 4k screen real estate um, depending on you know if you're running windows if you're running linux or mac it doesn't really matter although the 32 inch display will give you a little bit more physical screen real estate to play around with open windows and that kind of thing but the 28 inch the picture quality is a lot better because the pixels are a lot smaller you can't see them so image quality seems a lot higher overall i'm really happy with this monitor i'm really satisfied with it i'm gonna give it to an intern for a while and see how they do with it so we'll see how that goes oh one other thing i'll mention in case ultra wides are your thing there is a new version of the 290m now i haven't reviewed it yet but they've updated the case and they've updated the uh, connectivity to include hdmi 2.0 for the new ultra wide so if ultra wide is your thing this is an ultra wide that is super cheap 2560 by 1080 so you might want to take a look at that i've been really impressed with the stuff coming out of korea i can't wait to get some more stuff and take a look at it for you guys and i wouldn't have taken a look at this one if so many people had not asked in the forums and sent me emails and various other kinds of communication like hey i don't really want a 32 inch monitor that's just too large i want to do this but it's like you know a lot of those people are like i'm gonna run two monitors and it's like well wait a minute if you've got two monitors side by side why don't you just get one big one because one big one is going to take up less space and have more pixels i don't understand that it's like oh, i've got two 27s i'd rather have that than one 40 inch 4k and it's like well, i've got news for you two horizontal 27s take up a lot more desk real estate than one 40 inch 4k and one 40 inch 4k is almost a million more pixels than two 27 inch monitors at 2560 by 1440. what's that about too much room just run a single 4k you'll be fine and it takes up less space it's actually really elegant because you could run a single 4k on a monitor arm and not have this convoluted mess of monitor arms i might do that when 8k displays are out just as soon as i can get an 8k display in probably about 65 inches i will totally replace my monitor tree with a 65 inch 8k display totally i will do that that will be a thing so if anybody out there wants to send me a prototype you know where to find me on the forums i'm wendell i'm signing out and i'll see you later mm -hmm.